Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be making a micro boring bar holder for the Harrison M300 lathe. So I want to make something that fits my Dixon T2 quick release or quick change tool post and I've made some holders for that in the past. If you want to see the maths that's behind that then go back in my back catalogue. It was at least a couple of years ago now <clears throat> and I went through all of the calculations and measurements and things like that so I'm not going to go over that again this is going to be talking more about the setups and the manufacture in this video and I want to make a dedicated tool holder for holding small very very small diameter boring bars because I don't have anything that does that at the moment and currently it's just a bit of a lash up trying to use my existing tool holders and it's never very good so I want to make something dedicated that will hold a range of small diameter boring bars. I'm short of T2 tool holders so I've only got half a dozen probably I think there's three that came with a lathe and I made four I think when last time I made some and they've held up very well so I'm going to make this one out of some carbon steel I think the last lot I made were out of um, gauge plate 01 ground flat stock whatever you want to call it this time I'm just going to use some carbon steel for this it's not going to be getting a lot of use and I want to perfect the method on this before I go nuts and start making a proper one out of something a bit more you know a bit more robust in terms of material I think that is it there's going to be lots of machining obviously in this episode so that will please quite a few of you I know you like to see things getting made but I will talk about the setups in the usual manner as we go through. So without any more waffling, let's crack on with it. Okay, we're off to the races. This is machining. I'm fairly sure you guys don't want to watch this cut all the way through this piece of stock. So I'll bring you back when we're ready to start cleaning this up.
Okay, we're on our fourth side, so we've roughed out to plus 0.2 this way, we're just roughing out to the same plus 0.2 this way. Thought we'd push the envelope a little bit further on this machine because it's cutting well, so we've gone. So, the maximum cut I've ever taken is 20 thou or half a millimeter, so we've stepped that up by another 50%. So, we're now going 30 thou deep with 10 thou step overs. And I thought I'd show you a bit of that, so I'll put my camera in extreme danger. So here we go. Okay, we're blocked all out now on the shaper. We've come over to the mill and we're now roughing out this sort of T slot shape in the back. So I'm just doing the centre piece for now on the milling machine. So I'll show you a bit of that. Okay, we've got our groove done. It's time to now put our T slot or our undercut feature in. So we've got our Woodruff cutter in, and I've touched on the base and I've lifted up 0.1 or 4 thou, 0.1 of a mil or 4 thou. I'm now just going to touch on the side wall, zero my DRO, and then I've got 3.5 millimeters inwards, and I'm going to do that on both sides, and then I shall lift up to create the full height of the groove and take two or three more passes out of each side to finish off. So we'll touch on now. So we've got our T-slot shape put into the block now. So the next job we need to put our dovetail features into the block the same as we did here. Now in my previous video from a couple of years ago when I made these I made these on the mill and I did them a different way from how I'm going to do them this time and I use this dowel hole here as a reference for getting these dovetail features in the right place we're going to have a go at a different method this time round so I'm going to get the mill set up and I'll bring you back and tell you how we're going to have a crack at going about it okay as Mr Pete Tubalcane would say I've committed a cardinal sin and I've moved my head away from the trammed in zero position and that's because we're going to attack the V's on the back of this block in a completely well completely different way to the way I did them last time 
So what I've got here is a setup and I'm just tramming my head in at 45 degrees. So I'll just spin you around and show you the setup we've got. Okay, I've got my ground setting piece in the vise. I know this is 45 degrees, or certainly it was back in 1988 when I made it. And what we're going to do now is move the quill up and down its travel, up and down this setting piece. And as you can see there, we're, we're out. I've only just roughly knocked the head over at 45, just looking at the graduations on the head. So we're, we've got nearly over that length there we've got nearly a full turn which is 0.7 of a millimetre so we now need to try and influence that need some more Right, we're, we're bang on there now, as near as makes no difference, that's within 20 microns or something over that length, that's a thou, or just less than a thou, more than good enough. So I'm going to get the head nipped up at that and watch it all move, you don't need to watch me messing around with that anymore, you get the idea, and I'll bring you back when we've got the block set up in the vise. Okay, we've come in, we've lined our edge of our cutter up with our edge of the block, just by eye. It's not super important. We've then zeroed our DRO, we've wound in the required distance to my first centre line of my first V. We've zeroed the DRO again, and we've touched on the top of the block, and we've zeroed the DRO in Z. So I'm not going to use the quill at all, that's locked off. We're just going to be using the z-axis of the machine and the y-axis of the machine to put these two V's in. And because I've got my zero on this V then I've all I've got to do is pitch across <clears throat> by the right distance to the second V and all my DRO settings stay the same for Z to control my depth. Or at least that's the theory. So we will wind our first cut on and see how we get on. So our first V done. What I now need to do is back off in the x-axis and just put the mating 45 degree clearance on this corner. Can we do that now? Okay, there's our first V done. I'm now going to pitch across and do the second one on the opposite side.
Okay, we've done both RVs now, so that's all complete. Other than a bit, I've done the deburr, I've just got a bit of tidy on these faces to do, which we'll do in a bit. So we're just going to check this for a fit. That's perfect. There's absolutely no slop on there at all. And that grips nicely. So that's the bulk of the milling work done. There's a bit of drilling work left to do, not a lot. But we're now going to move on to opening this out for the boring bars to fit inside this cartridge. Okay, well we've got our block on the tool post. What I've done is I've just brought it up to the chuck and I've just used a square to square my tool post up to the lathe centre line. So I'm not going to touch the tool post again now, but what I am going to do is lift this block off this side and put it onto the front and I'll bring you back when we're doing the next bit. Okay, we've put our four jaw up, we've got a fixed centre in our tailstock, we've got another fixed centre engaged in that into the centre drilled hole you just see me drill. We've got our DTI on that fixed centre, I'll just zoom in on that. And we've set ourselves up pretty much on zero couple of microns movement maybe and yes I have got weight on the clock and what we'll do now is just show just set this up eyesight square for what we're doing it doesn't matter so we're on 10 microns and I'm just gonna scan in and out and We've got no movement that way either and I've achieved that by using a brass knocker when we first put this in the chuck just tapping this until I was square to the axis of the lathe then we put the live centre in and then we just adjusted everything with the jaws unfortunately the squareness this way didn't move so everything's nicely set up so what we're going to do now is remove all of this get some drills up in the tail stock and we're going to drill and bore through our block for our boring bar holders. Okay, we've swapped over, we've put our 3 jaw on, we're now going to make our boring bar holders to go in our quick, quick change tool post. So I've got some, some scrap here, don't know what it is, but the price is right. So I'm just going to set that out at a distance long enough to get what I need. We're going to centre drill that and put a revolving centre in. 
I'll not show you that and I'll bring you back when we're doing the turning. Okay, we're just on the second end of these now, so I'm going to face up, chamfer, centre drill, drill, ream in both ends of here. Now we just put in a clamping flat on the bars now. Okay, we're now set up to put our clamping screws at 90 degrees to the flat we've just milled on and that's why we did the flat first so that we can put that up against the fixed jaw so I'm going to put three holes in from each end drill and tapped M4 I'm using my absolute and incremental on my DRO so I've touched on both ends and I've got everything you know two datums in one setup on the DRO so we'll get on with that now.
So I've just turned one of these up for the top of the holder. I've not shown it, it's the same method as I used last time I made some of these so if you want to see that go back and look in my video history when I last made some holders all done with the parting off tool apart from obviously the knurl so we're just going to part this off now There we go, there's our adjuster made, I've just got to get that parting off burr off the back end of it and then that's complete. Okay, that's got all the machining done so what I've done while you were asleep is I've made another one so I've got 3mm, 4mm, 5mm and 6mm all drilled and reamed so I'm good for different size shanks of boring bars to be either bought or made from old slot drills, end mills, that kind of thing. So the next job is strip all of this down, give it a good clean and chuck it in the chemical black just to give it some corrosion protection and I will bring you back when we've done that. Okay, that's us all finished. So we've got our holder complete, we'll drop that onto the tool post and we're in good shape now. So I've got these boring bars I got from China, so you can see how tiny they are, that's a 3mm shank, so this will go down a 3mm bore. And this is how they come. So these are actually what they call Surmet, which is not carbide and it's not high speed steel. It, it's an alloy. It's a, it's a ceramic alloy basically, so harder than your average high speed steel. A little bit brittle, but will go a long way. And these were reasonably cheap, so I've got some 3mm ones like this and also some 5mm ones so hopefully that's showing up so you can see the grind on these so for very small bores and obviously as I said earlier I've got 3mm 4mm in the other end of this and then we've got 5mm and spin that round 6mm in this end on the spare one I've got lots more of this material, this was some free issue steel that I got so I can go make a, an 8mm, a 10mm right the way up to sort of probably 15mm so should I need to put any of my bigger boring bars into this holder to make this universal for everything up to the big boring bars if you like I've got that option to do that so really happy with that, very very sturdy you know it's it doesn't need to be super sturdy because it's a micro boring bar holder at the end of the day so it's only going to be taking tiny scratch passes but that's got our tool holder all done that's going to come in very handy and it means I've now got to not faff about trying to fit different size tiny boring bars into a standard tool holder for the Dixon tool post so very happy with that and with all of that being done and said, we'll go back to the board and we'll close this 
episode out. Well, there we go, guys. That gets us to the end of our micro boring bar holder job. So there's been a lot of work gone into that, but now it's done. It's, as I just said, it's expandable into the future. I've got lots of the bar stock. It was some free stuff that was going in a skip to make plenty more of the holders to go in so I've got unlimited options for diameters that I can hold in that boring bar holder which will be absolutely superb later on down the line for worn out high speed steel end mills things like that on regular metric shanks or even I could do imperial ones as well and when I get myself sorted out eventually with a D-bit grinder which won't be while I'm in this workshop because I've got no room but in the future in another workshop I'll have space for uh, a D-bit grinder or even if I modify my surface grinder to do this so I can grind my own boring bars of any size, any shape and then hold them all in that boring bar holder and that goes for small screw cutting tools as well if they're going to be ground so lots and lots of opportunities now to expand that into whatever I want to use it for. So I hope you've enjoyed that, there's been lots going on in that episode lots of shaping work, milling, turning, various different things so and I'm really pleased with the outcome so I hope you've enjoyed it thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else <laughs>